Hello, my name is Joey Ware. I'm a uh, VMware TAM, and I'm just going to do a quick little TAM Lab Nano. This was a question that came up internally. If you use RV tools and you notice you have a bunch of zombie VMDK files or zombie VM files, um, how to automate the process of removing it? Um, thankfully, with uh, the benefits of the VMware communities, uh, there is a moderator uh, is also a user uh luke who is great with scripting and let me just share my screen and show you what he came up with so that we can uh easily figure this out so i will post the link in uh, the uh youtube video of this uh where you can actually go to do this or just google uh, zombie files, VMware communities, you probably find it that way. So, and I'll show you in a second, but these are what you get with RV tools. And then he has a script. Now in his script, he's actually just moving the file. And there is some um, reasons why you'd wanna do this. Um, I highly recommend that you look over the RV tools and look over the file and determine if you should be um deleting or or you know in in the least case scenario if you just move the file you can still have it think about it in this way if you're not doing if you're doing if you're only doing backups of vms um these zombie vms are technically not registered the vmdks are not registered or the at, at the very most the vmx file is not registered which means the whole vm is not registered but the files are on the data store so if you're not doing some kind of data store backup you delete these files, you may have no way to recover. So what you wanna do in this case is verify everything. And let me uh, make that caveat, verify before you do anything. I am uh, a VMware employee, but I do not uh, wanna be held responsible if you delete a file and then you call support. Um, you can't point blank and say, hey, RV tools and uh, the TAM lab video told me to do this. Support will do their best to help you recover what they can, um, but please take backups of your environment or or look over the file and verify first. Let me switch switch screens here and let's go to my jump box. And I'm going to stop my video so that you guys are, you can see this better. And I will post this on my GitLab or GitHub and. Uh, Kind of go through it. So in this case, I am throwing a warning. I am uh, importing my PowerShell script user, which is a local uh, credential file here. Um, my password encrypted for uh, RV tools. This will be changing after this video, just in case you do somehow get in here. Um, the folder structure, the file that I'm looking for. The uh, I'm removing the previous file. So in this case, here's the previous file. We did it 123? It's 139 now. Uh, connecting to vCenter, getting a collection of all my data stores, and then going through the script. Now let me launch VMware Tools just so I mean uh, RV Tools so you can see what this looks like. All right, I'm gonna log in with this account instead. And I'll put the link as well for you to get the RV tools or just Google that as well. Um, in this case, we are looking for this V Health tab. And yes, this may take a while depending on your environment. I, I only have two data stores, one being my uh, standalone host and the second being my vSAN data store on my Intel Nook. Um, it will take a little bit of time. And as you can see, the uh, zombie files here. Now you can tell this, I have some at volumes. I have some content libraries. I have some replicas and templates related to, to Horizon. And what we are doing here, scroll down again. So we're matching is a zombie VM or a zombie VM decay, but I am not matching a replica at volumes, content library and the CP template. 
in the off chance that you have that in, in your horizon environment, you'd want to keep it. Or if you're doing content libraries, I do that just to make sure I don't delete files that I'm still using because in that volumes, they're not going to get mounted all the time, right? They're not showing up as a VM. And I definitely don't want to delete those VM decays because I do not want to have to reinstall everything. The first part of this script, uh, we are looking for a zombie VM. And if we go back to RV tools, let's scroll down right here. So this looks like a zombie VM. And what that means is this VMX file is not registered. This VM, uh, this is a template. I'm not gonna look for VM uh, zombie templates either. I don't wanna mess with those. Uh, but in this case, I've got a test blank here, one and two. And actually, I probably need to do a refresh on this because I haven't ran it again since I deleted it. So let's do a refresh. So it goes through and searches for everything related to the RV tools and all the stuff here. So this will take a little bit of time. Okay. So yes, now those, okay. And, and then all the other stuff that RV tool looks for, right? In this case, I am also going to create some zombie files again. I just came up with another script. I think I found it somewhere uh, as well. I am not a professional at this by any means. But let's go ahead and just create uh, some blank VMs across. I'm going to create three across both clusters. Um, so this is my standalone. This is my vSAN. And then th I'm going to create a zombie VMDK file. So what this is going to do is going to map or create a new hard disk against this uh, VM, and then it's going to remove it. So let's go ahead and just run this. Uh, in the bottom of the script, I have a call out to run the other two, right? So let's run that. Let me share my, let me share both screens so that we can see this run here. So I'm in my vCenter. It's creating the VMs. One, two, and three, and then it's removing them. Go down to here. It should create one, two, and three on the vSAN, and then it's going to remove them. And then now you should see the J, JWCA, there it goes, router, creating it, and then it's going to delete it. So if I go back into the data store, all that's done. And just to prove where there you are. So I should have three. There's one, two, and the other one right here, three, All right? One in this scenario is the actual one just because I've created and deleted something in the past for this VM, uh, actually one is, and we can go back and verify. I'm gonna edit. So VMR disk one is actually two. Our disk two, is actually the, the one just regular. Okay. Now, we're gonna run the script to actually remove those zombie files. And I'm, you're gonna notice I'm not running VMware tools again. I am not, or I'm sorry, RV tools again, because in this script, I actually have it where it will run it for me and then save that file off so that I don't have to keep doing it. So here I am deleting this file because I don't wanna, uh, I'm kind of using it as a wait mechanism do not go forward once that file is created and then move forward. And that is right here. So when the file is created, I'm gonna wait 10 more seconds and then I'm going to move forward. So let's go ahead and just run this whole script. Put my defaults warning out there. Again, VMware is not gonna be held liable. Please do this at your own risk, um, everything. So you're seeing RV tools is running in the background. It's not launched, it's actually just running as a task or a process. 
And then it, as long as it took a while ago, it's going to take that time again. Your environment will hopefully be faster, but your environment is probably a whole lot bigger. So we will wait and see. And then as you can tell, the file is deleted. Didn't refresh, it's still running. I'll just move this over. File's created, I'm waiting 10 more seconds. Now I'm gonna go through and start deleting what has determined to be zombie files. Um, I'm not a great person at scripting stuff, so you might see this is gonna run through several times. I think it's because of the way that it's pulling the data stores. And then it's got two mechanisms of looking for the file and then finding if the file's there or not. So look, sorry, deleting file. And it's telling you right here, it's deleting 01 underscore one. And what it has to do is actually, we are looking for the first part is, it's looking for the, the actual, if the VMX file comes up and says, you know, this is a zombie VM, then we will delete it. If it's just a VMDK file, we're only going to delete that file. But if it's the VMX file, we're going to try to delete the whole folder. If by chance the VMDK file that is in that folder is active on another VM, it will not uh, be able to delete that VM because it is active. So the folder, everything will be there except for all the other files that may be in there. So you can see here. Uh, it's these are, this is what I'm working on in my code next, is these are files and VMs that are on the vSAN data store. So I've got to get the actual uh, script to see which data store it is first, but it's going to look for it and it's going to say, hey, it's not there. And now it's going to go to the vSAN data store and see it's going to find those and delete them. Uh, in my other window, you're seeing that the dot sf files are not being able to delete um, once it deletes the folder those go away and then as i said it's deleting the vmx files which is deleting the folder after that it goes through and looks for the vmdk file sorry my mouse wheel is acting up so here then the next step will be looking for the vmdk file only so in this case, I should only have that one, the JWCA uh, router one, and then it will delete that one file. But it will look across both data stores um, for that one file. You will also see that it will try to look for the VMDK files of these folders. They were there in the file initially, because the whole VMX file was not registered. So the whole folder basically wasn't registered. So it cannot find it. That's just a issue with the code that I can't uh, figure out right now, but um, hopefully in the future I can update that or somebody be gracious to help me get that right. So as we can see, uh, files were deleted. It can't find it because the whole folder was deleted already. And it's going through again. And then it's done. So if I look on my, you know, this running VM, only the two drives, right? Two and then the default. If I go back into the data store, let me block that. If I go back in the data store, those test VMs, these are ones I need to get rid of because uh, they should be already deleted. But if I go back in the uh, JWCA router, There's two, there's no one. One is the one that was a zombie VMDK. Here's the default. That's the only two VMDKs before we had three. 
And if I go into here, my other data store, again, these are ones that were in here before, I just need to delete them. So hopefully this works out okay for you. Uh, we did not look for the, you know, the flat dot VMDK. So that is probably another update I need to do. Um, these are ones I just need to previously clean up. But the three that I created initially in my other scripts are all gone. So hopefully this script will work out for you. Uh, again, please test out in a home lab or, or a lab environment that you have before uh, proceeding with this. Thank you.